I am officially microchipped, baby! Just kidding. In all seriousness, I was pretty nervous to get the COVID vaccine. At first, I was debating on whether or not I should even get it at all. Then I read the studies myself and I was like, okay, the data looks really solid. I did it for my own personal reasons, mine being for self-protection while I'm working in the hospital because I want an end to quarantine and because I want to protect those around me. And for those of you new here, my name is Madeline. I'm a first year resident in the Northeast and I'll be doing my dermatology residency training starting next year. If you're not already part of the family, make sure and subscribe and join the muses. We have a lot of fun. We're super supportive of each other, love each other, and we'd love to have you. Also follow me on my socials. You'll get daily updates there. I post pretty frequently on my Instagram stories and it would really make my day to see your faces there. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up down below. It helps the algorithm help us to help other people and to educate more people. And feel free to share this video with anyone who is looking for credible information about the vaccines. Okay, so let's get started with the COVID vaccine. Everything that I say from this point on is going to be based off of evidence and recommendations by experts in the field, aka people that I have to look to for information because they are way smarter than me in this particular subject and because they have dedicated their entire lives to the subject. Okay, so let's get started with the basics. The COVID vaccine, whether it's Pfizer or Moderna, is an mRNA vaccine that is given in two doses and the doses are given three to four weeks apart depending on which vaccine that you get. The first shot only gives you partial immunity so that's why there's a need for the second shot. So what is an mRNA vaccine? mRNA is essentially instructions, like a recipe basically, that tells your cells how to make proteins. So as this vaccine is mRNA, the vaccine is essentially just giving us instructions for our bodies to make the spike protein that is on the outside of the coronavirus. The spike protein is not the virus itself, it's just the same protein that the virus uses in order to attach itself to our cells and thereby infect us. Our immune response is made up of multiple different cells. There are B cells, there are T cells, those are called lymphocytes and there are macrophages, there are many different things, but our strongest forms of defense are T cells and memory B cells. So after the mRNA is used to create a spike protein, it activates a component in our immune system called a B cell. B cells create antibodies, and antibodies are essentially little markers that mark things that don't belong. And it marks these foreign proteins for destruction. So that's how all the side effects happen with the COVID vaccine, with any vaccine really. It's your body making a natural immune response to better protect you. And how it better protects you in the future is through memory B cells. Memory B cells are like the experts who remember everything foreign that has ever infected your body. Now you have memory B cells against the spike protein that the COVID virus uses to attach to your body cells. So when COVID gets inside your body, your memory B cells recognize the spike protein and they're like, wait a second, that's that super annoying dude who tried to come up in here like he owned the place just the other month. And they're like, attack! They tell your entire immune system to mount a huge response against the COVID and that's how it prevents you from getting infected with coronavirus. So another question that I've gotten a lot is Moderna versus Pfizer, which one should I get? Which one is better? They're essentially both pretty much the same. They're both mRNA vaccines and they both work very similarly. They both have similar side effects, but I'll list out the differences for you here. So the Pfizer vaccine is 95% effective. It is 30 micrograms. It is two doses, 21 days apart, and it must be stored in negative 112 to negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit. It's approved for ages 16 and up, but keep in mind that approval ages are essentially just based off of the ages that were included in the randomized control trials. They can't technically approve it, 
until it's backed by clinical trial evidence. But this doesn't mean that people who are under the approved age wouldn't benefit from it. It's just that the CDC can't officially recommend it because there's no data for people under 16. Similarly, for the Moderna vaccine, it is 94.5% effective, so the difference is extremely negligible. It is 100 micrograms, it's two doses, just like the Pfizer vaccine, but it's 28 days apart. It can be stored at negative 13 to negative five degrees Fahrenheit and it is approved for ages 18 and up. But again, that does not mean that people under 18 wouldn't benefit from it. It's just that we don't have any study data on it just yet. Okay, now let's talk side effects. Common side effects are fever, chills, headache, fatigue, nausea, myalgias, which is just muscle aches, which is exactly what I got. And they're all normal signs that your body is building immunity. This is a process called reactogenity, and it's basically just our immune system making antibodies. Again, everyone's body is different. Some people will experience no side effects. Some people will experience every side effect for a full 48 hours. But regardless, having these side effects is better than the devastation that I have seen COVID can have on the body. Not to mention the collective loss and the grief that we have all experienced in the last year. These side effects last maybe 24 to 48 hours in comparison to the virus associated mortality which means death or morbidity which means the chronic disease due to the damage that it can cause on our lungs our brains our hearts our blood vessels our livers and the best side effect you can get from this vaccine is better cell service <laughs> no i'm a hundred percent kidding a hundred percent a joke in reality there is just no world, no universe, no scenario in which getting COVID is better than getting this vaccine and protecting yourselves and protecting those around you. Now I want to address some concerns that I have seen all over the internet and even from some healthcare professionals themselves. I'm going to give y'all facts, what we know, what we don't know. So this will be like a little myth busting section. Who are you going to call? Myth busters. I have heard a lot of buzz about the vaccine in pregnancy and infertility and I want to address that first because that is a huge problem because one, pregnant women are commonly excluded in clinical trials due to the liability concerns rather than based off of any medical reasons, based off of science. It's low-key discriminatory. The only reason the WHO cannot technically recommend the vaccine in pregnancy is because there isn't enough data yet because pregnant women were excluded from the clinical trials. What's new? But the science behind mRNA doesn't really indicate any adverse effects in pregnancy or that it could cause infertility. The vaccine has been recommended by all of the major obstetrics and gynecological societies in the US, including ACOG, the MFM Society, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine. The only major risk of this vaccine in pregnancy is maternal fever. And if you get a fever in your first trimester, it can be teratogenic. If you get it in your second or third trimester, it can predispose to preterm labor. The recommendation is to take Tylenol preemptively, meaning to take Tylenol before you get the vaccine and to manage your fever if you get a fever afterwards that way with Tylenol. And Tylenol is safe in pregnancy. Now let's talk about these theories that the COVID vaccine can cause infertility and cause you to be sterile. I want to make this clear right now, that is not true. It's totally false, it's a hoax, and I'm going to explain it to you now why that is. Let's get out of the restroom and continue this conversation because it's really hot in here. Let's break that down right now. Like I said before, the vaccine works through messenger RNA to stimulate your body to create antibodies against the spike protein that the coronavirus uses to attach itself to our cells. The proposed argument behind the vaccine causing infertility is that antibodies against syncytion one will attack the syncytiotrophoblasts that are part of the placenta. And if those antibodies attack the syncytiotrophoblasts, which are part of the placenta, then you can't make a placenta and you will be infertile. 
So first off, there is no evidence for this. This was just a claim that somebody made without any factual evidence to back it up. It's like me saying the sky is purple, but there's no evidence for that. It's just me saying it. Two, if these antibodies actually made women sterile, then we would be seeing a correlation between placental issues, miscarriages, infertility in moms who have had COVID already, which we are not seeing. But as you can see, these claims are pretty unfounded. They have no evidence to back them up and it's sad because it's really scaring people. If you want more accurate information on fertility in general and just general OBGYN information, I would recommend you checking out Natalie Crawford, MD. I absolutely adore her as a human. She's a bad A fertility specialist and just an incredible woman and role model overall. She shares factual evidence-based information and is a voice that you can really trust. The next concern is that the vaccine was created too quickly. And I definitely myself had, you know, reservations about how quickly this was made because this is unprecedented and you know i'm sick of that word i really miss precedented times but it truly is an unprecedented time not only in terms of the pandemic but also in terms of the science and the technology that we are afforded nowadays being concerned about the safety and efficacy of a vaccine is totally valid but every vaccine has to pass very stringent criteria for safety and efficacy and show it in clinical trials before it's approved for use in the u.s the known potential benefits have to outweigh the risks i personally consider myself extremely extremely fortunate to live in an age where we have the science and the technology and the means to roll out an efficacious and extremely safe vaccine in record time. We had thousands of the most brilliant minds in the world working on this all at once and decades of vaccine knowledge and mRNA research already behind us. It's remarkable really and really heartwarming to see so many people work together for the greater good. Next concern I've seen is that people are afraid that the vaccine will give you COVID itself. This is not a live vaccine. There is no part of COVID in the vaccine. There's not even a deactivated component of the virus. As I mentioned before, it is an mRNA vaccine. So it's using your body's own building blocks. Think of it as Legos, <laughs> your body's own Legos to build the spike protein, which will then cause your immune system to create antibodies against the spike protein that the coronavirus uses to attach itself to your cells. Another thing I've seen thrown around is that it'll alter your DNA. Messenger RNA cannot alter DNA. It cannot go into the nucleus of the cell, which is where all of your DNA is housed and stored. DNA is a precursor to messenger RNA. It's the blueprint for mRNA. So no, messenger RNA cannot go back and alter your DNA. Okay, so after you've gotten the vaccine, can you stop wearing a mask and stop social distancing? Right now, it's estimated that it will take about eight weeks after your second dose to build up the full 95% effective immunity. Although it's great to feel safe now that you've gotten the COVID vaccine, I feel extremely safe. We still don't know at this point whether or not vaccinated people can spread the virus. So please, 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 I implore you to still continue to wear a mask and social distance and follow the CDC for updated guidelines on best practices and how to best protect ourselves and those around us. The CDC guidelines will change as they always do, but they'll change based on the latest information that we have. Remember that science is ever evolving and that's what makes it so cool. We don't know everything right now, but when we learn more, we can make better decisions based on the new things that we know, the new things that we learn. And that's what the CDC will be doing, so keep an eye out for their recommendations. After you've gotten the second dose and you've waited the eight weeks to build up your immunity to the 95% effective rate, how long does immunity last? 
The short answer is we don't know right now. We don't know how long it's supposed to last just yet. Some vaccines provide lifelong protection like the hep B vaccine usually does, and some are annual like the flu vaccine. Experts are still trying to figure it out because the only way to know that right now is to give it time. But they are predicting that we will need to revaccinate people. We just don't know when. I do truly appreciate everyone being so curious about the vaccine and concerns are definitely valid, but please think before you share something that you're not sure about. Think about, does this make sense? Where is the evidence? We need to be careful before we share things on Facebook or Instagram or whatever else is out there or on blog posts because it really scares people. And as my friend Natalie said, we need to stop sensationalizing everything. There are so many claims being made that medically, physiologically, biochemically do not make sense and that don't have any evidence to back them up. But it's really scaring people. So please think before you share and think before you spread fear about something that there is no evidence for. I hope this video was insightful to you all and I hope that you will now go on to spread real factual evidence-based information to your friends and your family. And I encourage you all to get the vaccine and follow the guidelines of medical societies and expert opinions because COVID is real and I know that we are all sick of everything that's been going on lately. We're sick of the ways that the pandemic has affected us, but that's why we need to build up this herd immunity and hopefully get the world back to normal or as close to normal as we can given the circumstances. And please just trust the experts. I don't know everything. None of us know everything really. We're all human and we will all have our own strengths, but that's why I choose to trust the experts, the ones who know better than me, the ones who have dedicated their lives to this. Their research in this field is going to be so much more reliable than if I were to create and conduct my own research. Just as my research in dermatology, I hope, will be much more reliable than Kovu's research in dermatology. So please just trust the experts and let's continue fighting this pandemic together. Until next week, y'all, I love you. Remember that a little crit and a little grace can go a long way. Be patient and be kind to yourselves and to others. And remember to give yourselves a little bit of grace. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.